reflections on our first mission trip to Haiti, we recognize that we left to change Haiti, but in fact, Haiti changed us. During our time in Haiti, we met many who had much less than we, and yet their faith in God was intact and their joy at seeing help come from other people of color was tangible. The rewards from the trip flowed in both directions. We blessed them, and they in turn blessed us. One aspect of our blessing was discovering again that a little goes a long way. As part of the mission team, Vanessa Victor painted the interior and exterior of homes in the Lambie Village, helped to carry cinder blocks to the building site in the community, and spent time encouraging the youngsters of the community. Let's now experience Haiti through the eyes of our First Lady, Vanessa Victor. The impact that the mission trip to Haiti had upon my view of the world and the nation that we live in is it left me wanting to learn more about Haiti and its history and how Haiti came to be in the state that it's currently in. I now have a desire to learn more about the policies and practices of countries that have uh, had a great impact on Haiti, a great negative impact on Haiti, and I'm learning that the U.S played a great part in the impoverished state that the people of Haiti have now come to live in. For instance, I had no idea that the U.S. once occupied Haiti for a number of years and later put in place a dictatorship and supported it and also supported economic policies for a number of years that cut off trade to the nation of Haiti because it became an independent black nation and the U.S. and other countries did not want to trade and deal economically with people who looked like you and me. When we arrived each day to the Lambie Village on the bus, we were greeted by waves and smiles. There was even a toddler who danced and waved as our bus pulled up into the village. The people we encountered were gracious and welcoming, and I remember that the host explained to us that more often than not, the missionaries who come to Haiti don't look like us. So they were especially excited to see more African-American brothers and sisters coming to their aid. What impressed me most about their culture was the rich sense of community that they shared. Sister Johnny Bright and I primarily painted houses while the men did the hammering, heavy lifting, and the other strenuous work. And while very few of the villagers had homes and lived in either tents or shanty-like structures, they all shared in the worship celebration and home dedications for the two families who were receiving homes at the end of our visit. Even the young people became involved in helping to build and paint the houses. Children as young as 10 and 12 years of age would walk up and begin to help without being asked. Not only were they joyful for others who were receiving something that they didn't yet have, several of them also throughout the week helped us to paint and build houses that were not theirs. The impact that the mission trip to Haiti has had on my life is it has created in me a greater appreciation not only for what I have, but also how the resources I have can be used to help others. Looking at some of the things that we would probably consider small and inconsequential things in our lives, the trip to Haiti made me realize how inconsequential to us can make a difference in a person's life. Haiti has, an, I believe it's a 90% unemployment rate. The average person in Haiti lives on less than $2 a day. I think about the money that I would spend to go out to lunch. You know, while it's just a simple lunch to me, that could make the difference in whether or not a child in Haiti gets some protein at one of his or her meals for the day, or whether or not their diet for that day consists of just rice and beans. Haiti also has a 45% literacy rate. And there are no government-run schools in Haiti, very few. Most of the schools that they have are privately run, either by missionaries or other private organizations. But the cost to send a child to school for a year, on average, is $200. That's for schooling through the elementary to middle school level. At the high school level, I'm told that it costs, on average, $250 a year to pay for a child's education and books. I think about the money that we sometimes use to pay for things such as hair or pocketbooks or shoes. 
and it makes me reconsider how I use my resources and how resources that may not be very significant to me can be put to another use to make a great impact in somebody else's life. It was quite an experience for me to worship with the Haitian people who obviously worshiped in another language. We attended communion service the first Sunday at Grace International. I and mean, what struck me most about that worship experience was, despite the impoverished conditions that the Haitian people live under, namely the people who attended that church, when it came to Sunday and worshiping the Lord, they brought their very best. Even though they're unable to run to a mall to buy a new outfit or a pair of shoes and don't have electricity to plug up and iron to knock out a few wrinkles or even washing machines or, or washers and dryers to wash clothes, everyone was impeccably dressed for the Sunday service. And I was also impressed by the great reverence that they had for the Lord in his house. I would say to Mount Olive members who did not have the opportunity to go to Haiti, there are still many ways that you can help. Even though you may not be able to travel to Haiti and actually touch and see the person and talk to the people, the pictures do a great job at showing you the needs that they have. Fortunately, they have clean water. But as you can see from the pictures that housing is in limited demand, there's also a food shortage. Haiti is one of, is ranked among the three lowest countries for daily caloric intake for its people. I would close by saying, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Our brothers and sisters in Haiti and elsewhere need our help. And the Lord said that if you love me to feed my sheep, they too are his sheep and need more members of the body of Christ to come to their aid. Thank you for your overwhelming generosity in responding to the needs of the Lambie community. Our next mission team leaves on April 13th, and we ask that you pray that God will protect them and give them many opportunities to witness to his glory. Pray also that God will direct us as a church family and how we might answer the call of our Haitian brothers and sisters to come help us, just as Paul answered the Macedonian call.